Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning for another segment. We're going to be speaking in this segment with Mr. David Hunt, founder and president at COSAN. He's uh, joining us to discuss the company's mission in supporting successful aging in place for older adults through preventative care management services and technology-enabled services. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. David Hunt, thanks for joining. Thank you, Neil. appreciate you taking the time. Founder and president at COSAN, give us a bit of your professional background and talk about your role at COSAN. Absolutely, yes. Uh, yeah, we started COSAN back in 2015, really to address some of what I saw coming out of the, uh, the home-based service space uh, in physical therapy, occupational therapy in the home environment. Just saw an opportunity to kind of extend the lens of the you know, provider into that home environment and do so in a way that really connected what they were doing in the exam room to supporting the patient population in the home. So back in 2015, took the, uh, you know, the entrepreneurial leap of faith uh, and started COSAN. And the, you know, really with the objective of leveraging, at the time, what was a very small set of uh, virtual care codes um, to support this in a, as a SaaS environment, created a, a technology to kind of bolt onto the EMR environment in the hope that we could uh, really support patients in, in managing patients uh, virtually. And that was what the objective was early on with CMS coming out with that virtual care code called chronic care management. Do you think that more people want to age in place at home? And if so, what do you think is, I guess, the main reason for that trend? Well, absolutely. I mean, none of us, I think, uh, I really want to age in a in a foreign room somewhere off uh, in, in a long term care setting. Not to suggest that there's not some wonderful facilities. There really are, uh, but I think if any of us had our option, we would try to you know be around friends and family and and surroundings that were familiar to us. And so, uh, you know, what we see across the country is you know folks that are really getting to the point in their life where. You know, they would like to be around their grandchildren, be around their friends. And, and uh, aging in place is, can be very difficult if you don't set up the resources around you to do it uh, or if the healthcare community isn't capable of actually extending their reach into your home environment to help support you because you can't do it alone. It's very, very difficult. And so uh, depending on the, the structure and the caregivers around you, uh, you really need to leverage uh, you know, a variety of people to make it happen. And so, yes, to your question, they definitely do want to age in place. Uh, it is a, a significant population of folks that want to do that. And so if you look at the healthcare market as it is today, uh, without virtual care, and without some of the services and technology and innovation that is taking place, it will be very, very difficult for them to do that. And so uh, absolutely, uh, you know, this is an exciting time and uh, it's meeting a need within, the, uh, within that older adult market. Not only familiarity, wanting to not be in a foreign space, family, friends, but what about older adults that have chronic illnesses? Could they benefit from being at home as opposed to being in a facility or a hospital simply because they're at home with this condition? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, there's, listen, I don't think any older adult, uh, you know, at least the majority of them are immune to getting some type of uh, illness throughout life or some type of uh, chronic condition that, or multiple chronic conditions as you age. Mm -hmm. uh, but at any point, I think we all find a, a sense of satisfaction and comfort being in an environment that, um, you know, is familiar to us. So yes, they can, although they need support. And, and one of the benefits that we've seen through, you know, innovative solutions like we're offering is that education, uh, consistent outreach, um, you know, at a, in a basically a comfort level in sharing information because most older adults, they want to spend time, um, you know, understanding what's going on in their environment. You know, they, they don't want to have to search for information with the younger generation that's comfortable jumping on the Internet. You know, a lot of older adults really rely on their physicians and the support staff around those physicians to help inform them, you know, to help guide them through that healthcare care continuum. And so... You know, absolutely. If you have conditions, you can you can do so successfully. Uh, you can live successfully with those conditions at home, uh, as long as you have that support and that comfort, knowing that support is is readily available, which is something significant and really really needed. Um, and so that's really where we feel at Kosan that we're making a 
an incredible difference. Uh, and it's not just us alone, right? It's, it's also our ability to extend the lens of the provider, use that clinical knowledge of the provider and give them those insights of what's taking place in that home environment. Uh, and so, you know, today you go to the doctor if you're not feeling well. Uh, you know, that's, that tends to be the norm, right? You do have scheduled visits, but most people, if they're not feeling well, that's when they go see the doctor or if something changed, whether it's cognitive or functional, uh, you go to see your provider or go to see a specialist. But what happens when we can catch that information in real time? right, then it won't progressively get worse. And that's really the other benefit of virtual care is extending that reach into the home so we can actually help people understand why am I taking this medication? You know, why am I not feeling as well? You know, what's going on with my sleeping patterns? You know, uh, those are the types of things that we can actually uh, help affect in real time versus waiting to there's a, you know, a terrible event or um, an episode that really, you know, creates the need for hospitalization or creates the need for something where, you know, the provider couldn't get out in front of it. Even with telehealth, what about the manpower needed to coordinate all of these healthcare providers, all of these caregivers, and to couple that coordination with the education? Because, you know, there are going to be young people who are going to be senior care professionals and understand that um, we don't want to be on Google. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's a dynamic that not just the healthcare industry is facing, it's, it's a lot of industries are facing that right now, right? There's, you know, this exploding population of folks and, and there's not enough, you know, workers. And actually, I think with the benefit of virtual care is that if I'm living in a small town, you know, there's only so many clinical resources around me. And so as the population expands, if you don't bring in resources virtually from other locations, you just can't fill the gap. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in places where the population is very full, there's a lot more competition, right? And so if you don't have the ability to leverage resources from other areas, you know, across the country, uh, you run into problems there. And then there are locations where there are specific specialists that just aren't available. So through telehealth, we can deliver those resources. It really does level the playing field. Um, so it doesn't matter whether I'm living in a big city or living in rural America. Within virtual care, I can actually get access to resources, um, you know, just you know, by nature. If I'm, I'm at COPD in one, either one of those locations, virtual care kind of brings it a little bit, the care and the education and the oversight closer to where I live. I understand that part of Cosan's uh, chronic care management platform includes uh, voice bots. Talk about the voice bots, what they're able to recognize, and how significant they are in the uh, management and care of people when they're attempting to age in place. Yeah, so without technology, we can't extend what your you know earlier question was around the the amount of people that are capable of supporting this this growing older adult population. So what we use is voice bots to augment our staff, right? And so if I'm scheduled to talk to Mrs. Smith, uh, you know, the first Monday of every month, I can use our voice bots to call the second, third, and fourth, right? And what the objective is, more touch points. And so uh, they've got very comfortable, especially during the pandemic, using our other technologies like the voice bots. And what it does, it picks up a combination of things. Just the spoken word, I'm not feeling well today, and it goes directly back to the care coordinator that supports that particular patient. Or it's picking up statistical anomalies in the voice patterns that indicate some type of uh, you know concern exists, right, or medical concern would exist, and that will flag our care team as well. And so I can use uh, you know medical assistance and LPNs, and then based on the level of care that's needed, we can escalate that to a different clinical license like an RN or an MP or the provider themselves. And that gives us an opportunity to really kind of, you know, close that gap, address the real-time issues that the patients have, and, and voice bots have been wonderful. And early on, frankly, a lot of folks said, I don't want my patients talking to robots. And then mm -hmm. they looked at how well the patients adopted it. Yeah. And they're like, everybody, we should be talking to our voice bots, right? And so now we have a much bigger population using it. Well, if you would, give us a website where we can learn more about uh, your company and the services and solutions that you're offering there. Yeah, so it's uh, cosangroup.com, C-O-S-A-N-G-R-O-U-P.com. Dave, appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio and giving us this information this evening. Thank you so much. 
Neil, thank you. I appreciate the time this evening. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mr. David Hunt, founder and president at COSAN. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 